This is Chicago. At the dawn of the 21st century, Chicago's media was dominated by a handful of major corporations. But a resistance movement arose to free Chicago's media from their clutches. One player in this movement is the Chicago Independent Media Center and its TV show, Chicago Independent Television. The Independent Media Center is a worldwide network of grassroots correspondents committed to using the tools of the media for promoting social and economic justice. You are watching this month's Dispatch from the Chicago Independent Media Center. Mr. Bishop, I want to use this picture on the front page of our next issue. Oh, come now, Nancy. We can't print a picture like that. The paper is read by people all over the city. Just think what a picture like that would do to the reputation of our newspaper. I don't think we should hide things just because they're unpleasant. How do we stop things like this if we don't let the people know they're happening? Hi, I'm Vermin Supreme, and whenever I'm watching some sort of moving images on a screen, it's indie media for sure. This is the headquarters, nice to financial security. They're the ones bankrolling the Great Access Pipeline. They're the ones responsible for bringing that pipeline. to Illinois. 
boys. The judge ruling today, it clearly got me angry and it got me sad. to affect my future, my children's future, and so on. This is not something that's just gonna affect today, next week, next month. This is gonna affect my children. This is gonna make their children's children. This is gonna affect your children and your great-grandchildren. Our people rely on the land, and already too much has been taken from us. We must stand up and fight for what we have left stand up and fight for what we're going to have next generations. I went up to camp twice already. I was there at the beginning of the big camp and more recently over the weekend when they did attack those people with the dogs. Um, what, what they were protecting was a sacred site. It was burial mounds they tore up. They, tore, they completely destroyed a sacred heart society rock formation where they would do their initiations. And that was one of the only ones in America. So they destroyed stuff that cannot be replaced. They disturbed our ancestors. They aren't letting them rest in peace as they should have been when they were buried hundreds of years ago before colonization, before these things were even thought, before we even thought of destroying land, destroying water, these people were put into the ground. And they're not there anymore. And they're not letting us go into those spaces and pray for our ancestors. And it's really sad. There was a really sad, like, heaviness to the camp during that time. Um, but as a woman, I understand my responsibility in protecting the water. I am a water carrier. All the women are water carriers. Water is our first medicine in the womb. And we have to protect that. Men's job is to protect the women. Women's job is to protect the knowledge and the children, and we raise the children. And so everybody in here has been, first medicine has been water. And if we don't, pre if we don't stand up and protect that, then what do we have? We don't have any life, we're mostly water. And when we think about these pipelines, they're poisoning us right now. They're putting five tons of toxic waste every day into our drinking water. They're allowed to put mercury into our drinking water right in BP in Whiting, Illinois. Every single day they're putting toxic waste into our water. They're poisoning millions of us and there's no outrage. Nobody's caring, nobody's standing up. And now to see everybody here ready to stand up for our people, for my people, it's, it's really heart, it's heartwarming, it makes me happy. And we have to remember that this is a prayer movement. We don't wanna be angry, we don't wanna be sad. We wanna keep in prayer, we wanna keep centered. We want to make sure that the land that we're, we understand the land we're walking on. This is native land still. <laughs> so, as native people, we understand the land we walk on. We still know our medicines. We still see our relatives when we walk down the street. And I want to make sure that our children are able to recognize their relatives in the street and that they're not alone. I hear these kids say all the time that they're alone, but if they understand the, the land that they walk on, and that our DNA is in this soil, and our people are still buried underneath these lands, and we are still here, then I think I've done my job. The water and the land bring us together. Today we are one. Today we are all Standing Rock. Chicago stands with Standing Rock. <laughs> this is what solidarity looks like. This is what we need to win. This is one battle. Standing Rock is just one battle. We know there's many more pipelines out there. We know there's many other causes out there for us to fight for. This is an environmental justice cause. This is a social justice cause. This is an economic justice cause. We're here for the sovereignty of our people. And that means our people have rights and that we have a right to live, a right to life, and a right to get together here today and celebrate, and celebrate this victory because today we did get a big victory. The Obama administration, 
they did the right thing. They stepped in and they ruled on the side of the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. Our votes matter, guys. We are, we are in a very crucial time in this nation. We are in environmental justice crisis. No official order to stop all construction has been made. That hasn't happened. Um, the company has been asked to voluntarily stop doing a number of things, and there are some areas that they will not be given immediate permission to proceed in. But for those of us who work in state violence, we're kind of familiar with this, right? This, this stalling piece that happens in a moment when people are really angry. What we're basically being told is, we're going to stop and think about this. Folks are looking into this. Folks are reevaluating this. And what that means is that they are waiting for us to calm down. They are waiting for this to fall from the headlines. They are waiting until no one is paying attention anymore. And then they're going to try to build again. But we are still going to be paying attention, aren't we? This is why we live. You know, see this, this is what we live at. You know what I'm saying? The people, man, come down here because it's a hard problem. Every Friday we got to pack our shit moving around. You know, we got rights. We got two certain rights. What, yeah. what, so tell us a little bit about you know what kind of harassment you guys have seen from the, from the with cops. the police. Yeah, like what, you know um, they come down here talk about taking our tents. They talk about doing what they're gonna do to us. We ain't gonna allow that. You said that's every Friday they make you do that. Every Friday they come down here. We gotta move our tent. You know so what I'm saying? What What are some of the reasons that they give like for why you gotta do that? I don't know. They don't give us reasons. You know what I'm saying? They don't give us reason. What do you, what do you think the city, the city should be doing instead, instead of like, you know, forcing well, you guys the city to wants us out of here to find us a place to live. You know what I'm saying? Find us a place to live. They got people, man. I know people from out here a long time ago when I was out here. You know what I'm saying? They take everybody out here got income. What, the, what about the people who ain't got no income? What y'all doing for them? But your people out there, police out there, the city out there, ain't trying to help nobody out here. You know what I'm saying? It bogus. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've been out here too many winners. My name is Lil John, man. I'm telling you today, this housing is a human right. <laughs> here today because the city has conducted a relentless campaign of harassment against the homeless, illegally confiscating people's property as was shown in a court case here where the courts just recently upheld the Illinois Homeless Bill of Rights when police tried to take away their personal property. We have seen sweeps right down here every Friday starting a few weeks ago and supposedly going through next, uh, the middle of October. These sweeps done under the guise of cleanings are nothing short of harassment. We have got a shelter right over here at 941 West Lawrence, which for lack of a mere $100,000 for the entire fiscal year 2017 will close down unless someone makes up the gap. And yet we've got $15.8 million slated to go to uh, wealthy luxury high rises, and yet they can't come up with a mere $100,000 to keep a shelter open for an entire year. That has got to stop. That's right. And one of the things we need to begin to correct that is for the zoning committee, the zoning and land use committee, to not be packed with a bunch of wealthy white 
owners of property. We need to reflect the diversity of this ward, which is poor people, it's middle income people, it's black, it's white, it's Asian, it's Hispanic. We need to reflect that diversity in our ward. I believe that information and revealing the truth about our, the current state of our shelter system is very important. And uh, I, I, I believe information is key to uh, shedding light to the city's spending their true intentions, um, not harassment and, 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 and chasing the homeless people away, essentially to another completely undeveloped, overstressed area of the city, um, just so they can say the problem has been solved. The real solutions need to be in place. There needs to be an evaluation of who are the homeless. And I believe and I, I still hope for a mutually beneficial resolution to the situation that is not just for me, but for many of the residents under these viaducts is absolutely necessary. Talking about a life and death kind of situations um, without tents. Uh, before I left out to come here, I saw an announcement that was made by CTU, the Chicago Teachers Union, that Rahm Emanuel is firing 250 more teaching professionals that ain't today. Right. That ain't right. Last week, he made the announcement that he was hiring 1,000 more police. Continually, we see that the city mysteriously doesn't have money when it comes to the things that people actually need to survive. Somehow, they don't have money for the $100,000 necessary to keep the shelter open, but they found $15 million to build a luxury high rise. Somehow, they don't have money to keep our schools open, but they have money to hire 1,000 more police officers. One day, CPD is given $4 million, which exceeds the annual budget that the city allots for shelters in the entire year. That's not right. In one day, CPD gets $4 million to murder and harass and torture our communities. This must end. I think we have quite the contrast with what's going on over there at the empty uh, Cuneo Hospital and what's happening over here. On the one hand, the city is taking things away from people who need the most. And on the other hand, they're giving $15.8 million to people who need the least. The rich are getting richer. We're all getting poorer. Yeah, right. we're, there's a transit uh, district where developers are getting tax breaks for building new upscale housing. And you see time after time tip money being used on upscale projects that raise the cost of living in communities, not lower it. And, and meanwhile, we have a homeless shelter, Andy brought up, that only needs $100,000 to stay open. Northside Supportive Services have pleaded with the city, pleading with DFSS, if you can give us just $100,000, that will keep our shelter open. Well, what's, what's the holdup? They spend that much alone on the cleanings every single week to throw people's items away and to push out the homeless. They spend more on that than they would than they could on keeping a shelter open and keeping more people off of the streets. Up town for everyone! Up town for everyone! Up town for everyone! Housing is a human right. We get that right. We understand that, right? Food, shelter, clothing, these are essential for us to survive. Now, this city talks about crime. We've had over 500 killings in this city, right? But it never talks about the causes. It never talks about how it comes out of poverty, how it comes out of a desperation, how when you close 50 schools and over uh, six mental health clinics, how you take away resources from our communities. Now, I've had the opportunity to work with young people coming in and out of shelters. And the one thing I can say is the little resources that they do have, 
they're getting services around therapy. They're given a sense of safety. They're given a space to, to feel love. And these things are essential for people to prosper. But when you take this away from people, you leave people with very limited options. When you put people out in the street trying to hustle, trying to survive, what do you expect is going to happen? Right? So we have to fight for our homeless. We have to fight for our most marginalized. We have to fight for our most disenfranchised because they are a reflection of us. If we don't uplift and love and center the people that are most vulnerable, then we have to look at ourselves. Now this isn't a moral issue because the city and these capitalists have showed that they don't care. There is no empathy. In fact, I call them psychopaths because there is no love and compassion for people, especially people of color, especially poor people. So this fight is one that we have to convince our brothers and sisters that they have to take up. Because it's us, power to the people, that's gonna make this change happen. But we can't do this alone. We need each and every one of y'all to step up. We go to work, we do things, we take care of our friends and families, but we have to say we have a bigger community we have to take care of. Because our people are hurting right now. And when you kick a person by his down, while they're down, you leave them no choice to fight back. How the hell are you taking tents away from people? How the hell are you pushing them out when you already took away homeless shelters? That just doesn't make any sense. To me, it's an all-out war against poor people. It's happening all across this country, and they get mad when cities burn down. Well, what the hell you expect people to do and how you expect them to react? That's right. Right. We're here, we're doing, we're sacrificing freedom for you guys, sacrificing our, our, our freedom for you guys, and we're here to pray in a prayerful manner, so to you guys to show the world what's going on here, and I'm here to only report what's going on in my eyes and my ears, but it's up to you guys to tell Obama, tell Hillary Clinton, to tell everybody that I'm risking my life to be here to take this water. They have guns out there, they have their batons out there, they want to beat us, they want to hurt us. The Dakota Access Pipeline is not supporting anybody but themselves and those greedy people, the one percenters. It's up to you guys to know that this ain't, this ain't right. It's up to you guys to do this. Share this with the world. Share that I don't, I, I'm not being silent about this. This is our right, this is our American right to report what they're doing. And they're trying to block us from not having drones out here. They're blocking us from the media that's being negative to us, calling us rioters, saying we're shooting arrows at their damn helicopters 2,000 feet away. You know, their aircraft are telling us that their lives are endangered, but we're the ones getting beating on. We're the ones being arrested. We're the ones being maced. just about law enforcement and us. It's about the water. It's about the people of the next generations, the millions of people that are going to be affected on this water. If, anybody in the truck if drops, one uh, oil spill happens, it's going to affect millions of people for time memorial after that. Please get here now. You Call your local government. Call your local Facebook. Everybody, up. Twitter. Tweet this out to everybody across the world. It's important important that you guys get this media out. People that are watching, definitely arresting people here. They're trying to censor our media here. So I have no visual for you guys now. I'm here live as much as I can. I'm reporting to you guys live as far as I can. They're telling me to get off of this roof, but this is the only live feed I can get. So it's the 31,000 people that are watching, definitely arresting people here. Get 
on our prayer ties. Don't be stepping on our. Got this tear gas gun ready. Everybody else to the south, back to the south camp. You need to go to the south camp or you will be arrested. I hope these ancestors visit you tonight in your dreams to tell you that this is wrong. We're praying for you. I just got hit by one of the bean bags. They're shooting at us now. Get it over here, get it over here. They just shot that orange gun right there at us. They're shooting their guns now, their beanie guns. They're here trying to block us out. They're taking out our frontline camp. They want us to move back to Osheti Sakawan down south, but we're not moving because if we move, that DAPL is going to be going across our land, taking over the water. The Dakota Access Pipeline, they're still working and still taking up our graves out there.